All right, so everybody who is joining us, welcome back to part three, the final part of our Whose Line Is It Anyway a program for May 24th, 2020. And the first game we're going to play in part three is called Secret, which is a two-player game. And in this case, I would like, if you both are willing, Jen and Janice. Are you willing to play, both of you? Sure. Okay. So the concept here is, and I'll give you the scenario, the, the storyline. Uh, basically, uh, you're going to be acting out a two-person scene. And during the course of this scene, after just a little back and forth, uh, both of you have secrets that you're hiding from the other person. They're secrets that um, are involved in a physical item of some sort. And uh, so you'll basically, one of you will uh, discover the other person's secret. There'll be a satchel or a box or something that you'll see and you'll, you'll like, oh, I should open that up and see what's in there. And I will raise up the item that you find in front of my camera so you'll see what it is and react to the secret that the other person had hidden. Then the second person at some point will have to work into the plot that they discover a box or something that has the other person's secret and we'll do the second secret item that you're reacting to. Got it? Okay. Got it. Okay, here is the scenario. Let me get my script back up again on screen. You two are college roommates. Sad that the college year is over. Try to ignore the fact that nobody's in college right now and nobody <laughs> is, is roommates. But you two are college roommates. Sad that the college year is over. Um, you're preparing to pack up and head home for the summer. Um, if only it weren't for the secret that both of you are hiding from each other. Oh, geez. <sighs> I don't want to go back home. It's just, it's so much better here without my parents being able to watch everything I do. Oh, I know, darling, now that I'm majoring in theater, finally, after, you know, French and ethnic studies and um, chemistry and pre-med just didn't work. Um, so now that I'm majoring in theater, I've got a job at this summer trip, like this theater thing. We're going to travel everywhere. and I'm just going to get in touch oh. with my inner self. Oh, you're so lucky. I can't afford to travel anywhere. I have to just bring all this stuff home and... and oh, Dolly, why don't you just be a groupie? You can follow me around and, and throw roses and, 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 and just, just, just follow the show. Um, maybe we can even get you a job. You could, like, pick up peanuts or popcorn or something off the floor. Ooh. <laughs> Does yeah. that Sound good. Now, what was your major again? Maybe we can fit it in with your major. What were you studying? Oh, nuclear physics. <laughs> oh. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh. Yeah, you know, maybe you better just be a fan. Mm -hmm. You can write me fan letters. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I'd be glad to come with you if you could just underwrite all my expenses. I mean, it's, it's not paying very well since I'm an undergraduate and I really haven't discovered any, you know, anything new like the Higgs boson or anything. Uh, I really don't even have a line on new discoveries. I just, I'm going to be poor for a while. Well, as far as coming with the group, how do you feel about sleeping with random, uh, with, well, no, not random men, just one particularly sleazy stage manager? Is that your thing? Don't, don't forget to incorporate the secrets. Uh, did you hold something up? I didn't see anything. No, no, no. You, ha you have to find something. So you, oh, you're looking yeah. through boxes oh, or something. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you think it over. I'll help you pack, sweetheart. Um, oh, no, so, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll take care of that. I'll take no, care no, no, no. What is it? No, oh, my gosh. It's heavy. What is in here? No, it's just, it's, it's, no, I'll take care of that. I mean, no, I'm trying to help you. Just go ahead and take care of your stuff. I'm, I'm. No. I'm just trying to help. You don't have to get all... Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, no, you know, really, it isn't what it looks like. It isn't what it looks like. <laughs> it's a gun! You killed no, someone! Not, we not, keep talking, no, we're going to find a body under the bed! No, that's, that's for shooting neutrons. <laughs> <laughs> Neutron. You use it. You use it in the collider, and you just shoot in a neutron, and it just changes... It, it, it changes the nature of, of the, the proton that's in there. Oh, yeah, Clarice, you have discovered things. Well, I'm pretty it, sure it, no one else is doing that. Pretty sure. Well, well you know, it, I haven't really discovered anything, but I am working on a new process that will make things 
less expensive for for the research and uh and i just i just i don't want my professor to know because of course he would take credit for it i see so so you have the secret neutron shooter oh wow you're actually cool like this <laughs> you. you thought you were you a can, total nerd you like, thought i was a total nerd well and and you kind of well, no, still I, are you kind of still I'm, are but you're cooler then, oh my gosh, like this is like a revelation. Like this means something, this is profound. And oh my gosh, so, put that back, put that back, put that back. <laughs> so what is, what is this you're, you're packing? Um, I need that, that's important. <clears throat> um, just, just put it back. Is, is, <laughs> this, is this what you've been hiding under your blankets all year when you I know sleep you thought in I was... bed after I go to bed? I know, you thought I was in there with the boy. That was just really <laughs> short. Well, it would have been a really small boy, but I <laughs> help wonder. No, 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 it's, it's actually, <clears throat> this will probably surprise you because I seem so normal. Uh, but I have issues, actually, <laughs> like issues, like issues. Yeah. And, um, Is this why you kept asking me about the three-headed green babies? <laughs> 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 um, that's actually a different issue and an ex-boyfriend and kind of another thing. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's try another game. Um, two-line vocabulary. Uh, let's see. Becky, who would you suggested for this one? Oh, I think Dave and Armand, right? Or okay. Two-line vocabulary is one person can say whatever they want, and two other characters each only have the ability to say two lines, and I'll give those to you in just a moment, and we'll also give you what the scenario is. Dave, as usual, we'll you need, get to be, you get we'll to be the one who says whatever he wants. So. We'll need Spencer too, right? Sure. Let's just let's just throw in the three veterans from Media West. Spencer and Armand, you get to be the two line people. Um, Spencer, your two lines are, I think you're dreamy, mm -hmm. and can you validate my parking? Okay. Armand, your yeah. two lines are, my shorts are too tight, <laughs> and where's my boo-boo? <laughs> Got it? Got it. Okay. Dave, your scenario is you are the head of the president's secret service detail and you're training your two new agents before a critical new event where they have to provide security for the president. All right, uh, you guys, uh, I know you're the newest, uh, newest recruits here, but uh, the president is going to be inspecting a, uh, a, a facility that is uh, making full body masks. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, full body masks. Uh, and he's, he needs to, to let everyone know that this is vitally important. You, you think you guys can uh, handle keeping the crowds away? I think you're dreamy. Well, thank you very much. But you know, we have to keep it very professional here, especially when the president's around. Uh, you, we, we all know how the president hate sexual connotations so where's my boo-boo i you heard yourself i i don't I, I don't know uh i'm sure i can find a first aid kit if that's if you need that so oh uh, i first, think you're dreamy yeah mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, that's that's great uh now first thing we do is let's we have to inspect the facility to make sure there's no hidden uh bombs or terrorists in here my that shorts are tight. uh well you just might want to relax a little bit. I know you're kind of nervous on your first day on the job. So let um, can you can you validate my parking? Uh, I I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, if they I have think to. you're dreamy. Well, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so let's as we go in here. As you can see over there, that is the manufacturing portion of the plant there, and that's where the full body face masks are are put together. The president will be looking at that very intensely. So Where's we have to make sure that, what was that? Where's my boo-boo? 
I, 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 why do you keep hurting yourself? This is not, this is not going to help us. Okay. Can you please just keep your focus on the task at hand? Now, uh, you, sir, I want you to check that, check out that, uh, that machine over there, sir. I want you to make sure that that is safe. I, I think you're dreaming. Okay, uh, that's great. But uh, now, uh, now, and you, you, I want you to make sure that there's no hidden mechanisms that could jump out and cause the president harm. Can you handle that? My shorts are too tight. Well, can you loosen them a little bit so you can bend over? Because it's really important, okay? So, uh, so uh, did you find anything? Uh, was the mechanism safe? Can you validate my parking? If that's necessary for you to do your job, I will validate your parking. Oh, okay. think you're dreamy. Oh, that's, that's, I, I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't, I just don't care. All right. So, and what about you? Is, is there anything hidden in that mechanism that can cause the president harm? My shorts are too tight. Uh, well, is, is, it, is, the, is the mechanism causing your shorts to be too tight? Can you get a closer look at it? Tell me, what, what's that, what does that mechanism do? My shorts are too tight. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, I, I, I lo loosen the belt a notch or two, okay? I just, ah, I, I think you're dreaming. I, Where's okay, you, dude? okay, we can't have inner office relations, especially <laughs> when we're not technically in an office. <laughs> oh, um, now just focus on business. Now, uh, if now you, if you were. Uh, confronted by a terrorist trying to hurt the president here, what would you say to him? My shorts are too tight! And can you validate my parking? Uh, 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 now, do you think validating the parking is actually going to stop a terrorist trying to hurt the president? Ah, oh, you're dreamy. Yeah, absolutely I am. You see, I dream up the good ideas here. And uh, what about you? Do you really think that having shorts that are too tight will do anything to make the president feel more safe? What do you think would make him feel better? Where's my boo-boo? Can you validate my parking? Uh, I'll have to see if uh, if the limousine is double parked and uh, if they've got a first aid kit. Thank you, guys. All right, here's a game for everybody to participate. <laughs> Um, my understanding of Zoom software is that when you're in gallery view so you can see everybody, everybody's collection of how you see the screen is completely different from everybody else. It's not in the right. same order. So I'm going to have to serve as sort of a referee here, but this is Fairy Tale. Um, Fairy Tale is a, oops, hang on a second. There goes my software updating message. We don't want that. There we go. Um, fairy tale is one where we're going to get a suggestion from one of you um, people out there as to a unusual type of fairy tale that we're going to begin. One person will begin the fairy tale with the standard once upon a time um, introduction to it. Two or three lines of the, of the fairy tale setting the story in motion and they will pause. I will then tag somebody. I will basically say one of you guys' names to continue with the next two or three or four lines. You will pause and we'll continue on. Everybody gets a turn. The very last person at the end basically needs to wrap up the story. And we, we can, if, if the story is sort of flowing very well, we can continue with multiple turns if you want. But the very last person, somebody needs to have an end point to do a wrap up of the story, the moral at the end of the fairy tale, if you understand. So everybody should all, be unmuted, though. Everybody needs to have their mics on. Yes. And so far, the only person I see marked on, yep, everybody is, is active mics now. So uh, somebody throw out <laughs> the subject of an unusual fairy tale. And it could be a modern era story. It doesn't have to be something from ancient times like most fairy tales are. Any ideas? Snakes on the plane. Goldilocks meets the big bad wolf. The princess. Uh, it needs to be something that's real. That doesn't actually sound like a fairy tale. That would be something uh, okay. like the tale of the IT specialist or something like that. So. Uh, the tale of the, the tale of going through the airport to catch a yeah. plane. That works. That, most of us have had an experience with a plane and, and going through the journey and stuff like that. So here we have the fairy tale of going through airports, go, go, going on a flight and going through security at an airport. So uh, somebody begin. So. Once upon a time, there was a family of seven people who were going on a trip. So they started off at the airport. 
Janice. One of them had a wooden leg. One of them had a prosthetic arm. One of them had a prosthetic nose. And the other three were children. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one of them was caught by airport security for bringing in booze and kicked off. Rob. And as they were being escorted to the waiting room, the federal armed guards appeared to question the validity of their documentation. Where, where is your certification? Where is your boarding pass? What happened to your driver's license? And do you have true ID? Armand. Well, along came uh, the artist, formerly known, the TSA agent that used to be known as Prince Charming. Hey. And he <laughs> thought he would swoop into the rescue and save this family. So he arranged the proper documents and made the alcohol disappear and said, you know, you look like you'd use a, use a hand. Becky. So, so they finally got through to the waiting area to board for the plane. And a little child from another family came over and stared at the artificial nose. Just kept staring at it. Jen. Then the nose started to grow. It was the nose of, of the staring secret. If it ever got stared at, it would grow and grow and grow. And soon, Papa family member wasn't going to be able to get on the plane. And so they found, um, fortunately, stuck under the seat where they usually find gum and disgusting things, they found a secret magic potion. And so they rubbed it on uh, father of the family's with the nose's nose and it started to get to, sh to shrink and they were able to get on the plane. And then as they were sitting on the plane, they turned to the person next to them and said, well, where exactly are we going? And the person said, Dave, we are going to the magical land of rhinoplasty. <laughs> <laughs> and as the plane took off, they looked out through the window and they saw the villagers waving goodbye, waving goodbye <laughs> as they went off on their perilous journey. The plane slowly made its descent into the land of rhinoplasty. They exited the plane and came forth and saw the doctor of miracles, the man who knows about knows, oh. so came up to them and he said, to, I am so glad you are here because today we have something very special in store for you. Spencer. Today we are, because you are in the land of rhinoplasty, we are going to get on those plasties and we are going to look at those rhinos. And we're also going to do something about your nose, sir. So they got on the plasties and they went off to look at those rhinos. Now, what they did not know was that one of those rhinos was the very rare spotted rhino, which if you could catch him, would be able to grant your wish, as long as your wish had something to do with your nose. Nathan. So the family went to this spotted rhino and they wished upon it to go back to the airport and <laughs> start their journey <laughs> over again because they did not like their destination who has a wrap up and a moral for the story dave you read <laughs> And when they returned to the airport, the TSA agent said, now you can only go on this trip, on this plane, if you select this, one of these several noses. And he did. Uh, but unfortunately, he did it in front of everyone. And they were then banished for life. The moral of the story is, don't pick your nose in front of other people. Oh. <laughs> All righty. Um, our bonds finish. The moral of the story is, if you're stuck at the airport, you can't get a leg up, your nose is out of joint, and you need a hand, <laughs> also 
Follow your nose. Oh, oh, oh. oh that was armed robbery. Oh. <laughs> armed robbery. That was armed right. robbery. <laughs> We're going to go with one of my personal favorites, Playbook. Uh, Dave, I will have you be the actor, and Becky, you have a play there with you, so uh, we won't bother having somebody select one of multiple plays. We've just got one set aside. However, Liness, pick a page between 20 and 50 for Becky to start the play on. 36. All right. What we need from the audience, this is a scene, for those who are not familiar with Playbook, this is a scene in which Dave gets to say whatever he wants. Becky, however, has to read a single character's lines from a somewhat randomly selected play um, and cannot vary from that. She can put different intonations into the lines if she wishes, but she has to stick with whatever is written on the script. Uh, what we need from the audience, however, is a scene. We have in the past had two people trapped on an elevator, somebody uh, in a, a traffic accident, et cetera, et cetera. What we need is a scene that might be filled with some sort of dramatic tension between two characters. Anybody got a suggestion? Two lovers trying to be socially distant. You're on a life raft in the Titanic. What was that, Arma? You're, you're in an ice cream parlor and Dave is trying to ask Becky out. You're on a life raft from the Titanic. There's drama. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you guys are on a life raft from the Titanic, so you can throw history in and everything. How about that? So, Dave, begin our scenes. Uh, well, uh, Janice, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you decided to go out with ice cream uh, for, with me here at the, on the Titanic. <laughs> I'm just really sad that uh, our first date didn't turn out as, as great as I would have liked. Uh, uh, <laughs> So, uh, how about that weather, huh? <laughs> um, the ice cream is Oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I know you're, you're, uh, you're, you're kind of upset about how things turned out. I mean, I, I, I knew, I knew, I, I it was a bad idea ordering Rocky Road because now we're on a Rocky Road. So, uh, I guess so. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I still don't know anything about you. Tell me. Uh, uh, where are you from? Uh, what are your hobbies? Uh, um, do, you, do you like ice fishing? <laughs> That's quite the name. Yes, uh, yes, you do have quite the name, and, and I think it's a beautiful name. Uh, yes, and I've heard a lot about your mom. Uh, I, I don't, what did I talk to you that much about my mother? I'm so <laughs> embarrassed. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a mama's boy. I, I, uh, I was really sad that I had to leave her behind, but, uh, yeah. but no, I'm focusing on you now. Well, oh, I'm the, fine. Yes, I know you are fine. You are the new woman in my life. I'm not even going to think about anybody else. My future is with you. No, thanks. This is all I need. <laughs> really. <laughs> well, you know, eventually we're going to need food. We may have to eat no. that. So we're, we're probably going to have to, you know, Learn more about each other, our likes, our dislikes, our, our, our fears, and our passions. Oh, right, right. Happy birthday. Oh, you know, I, I, that was another thing. They were supposed to come out and sing, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. But we hit the iceberg. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I've heard about breaking the ice at a party, but ha, that was not what I had intended. So uh, I'm really <laughs> sorry. I, I think your present is... It's still floating out there. I could, I could <laughs> put the boat towards it if you want. No, they were fine. But no sooner had I driven off the ferry, but I ran into a breakdown in the middle of the road. It was pretty bad, and I didn't have my cell phone. Uh, I, I can understand how that would be traumatic and why you would need to take a cruise to clear your mind. Uh, so, uh, so tell me... Um, how uh, how about uh, long walks in the park? Is that something you'd like to do? I was running late, but somehow I made it through, and I got here, and what do you mean you know? I know that you love to take long walks in the park. You see, I was kind of over uh, overhearing and listening in on a conversation. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I know it sounds kind of creepy, but I knew the minute I saw you here uh, on the boat, I said, man, that is a woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. 
He did? Uh, yes, I, I did. Uh, I don't know why you're referring to me in third person, <laughs> but uh, it, it's, I, I, I think it's sexy. I think it's sexy that you do that. You keep it up. You make yourself happy because that makes me happy. One minute. He's, he's well, he passed. Uh, I'm sorry. He, I, he passed I, away. He passed away. Yeah, well, way back there. That's where we, we passed him, way back there. That guy who was supposed to bring us our pre the present at dessert. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah, I see too. He's kind of floating face down. I really oh. was well on that. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I had the 10 minute and less counter going and we only have nine minutes left. So we're gonna do one final group game uh, for anybody that wants to participate. Dave, you're gonna be our central figure. This is Addicts Anonymous. Uh, what we need from somebody in the audience here is a suggestion of something that all of this group would be addicted to and needing to have a Alcoholics Anonymous style of meeting. Dave, fanzines. Fanzines? Star Wars. 80s. 80s sitcoms. Bagels. 80s Star Wars fanzines. <laughs> um, Chocolate. I, no, I, I actually like, because we're all of an age that most of us are going to recognize it, 80s sitcoms. So we can pull in some cultural reference. So 80s, you're all addicted to 80s sitcoms and trying to break that habit. Dave is the leader of our uh, addiction group. He's going to open the meeting. Uh, and he's basically going to ask at least one or two of you former member or, or past members of the group uh, to explain where you are, what, what latest challenges you've had with regards to addiction. Then there will be a, another person that he asks who is it's your first meeting with this group. And at the very end, I'm hoping to wrap up in the next seven minutes and 50 seconds, uh, he will wrap up by having everybody try to say your mantra or your oath at the end of the meeting. Dave, take it away. Uh, well, I'm glad that uh, all of you are here again this week uh, at the uh, WYTAW meeting, or what you talking about, Willis. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a difficult thing for us to get over our obsession with 80 sitcoms. So uh, I, I'd like, uh, as you speak for the first time, if you could please tell me your name, and if you could uh, tell me what sitcom it is that you became obsessed with, I think it'll help everyone to get through things. So who would like to go first? Well, my name is Spencer, and- um, Hi, Spencer. I really got hooked on MASH. Oh, hooked on MASH, yes. Now, yeah. uh, now what, what was it about it? Was it the fact that they were in a, an army surgical hospital or the fact that it was mobile. You never knew where they were going to be moving week to week. Oh, it was definitely the mobile. I, you know, I just, I tuned in every single week. Where am I going to find those lovable cut ups next? And, uh, and what exactly, which character did you most identify with and why? Oh my gosh. I so identified with Hawkeye. Um, and mostly, and I identified with him because he seemed to be um, the most lost of all of the group, um, you know, but covering it really, really well. Wow, that, I, think that's, I think that's very, very interesting. Who, who, who would like to be next? Yes. Hi, I'm Lenise, and um, I'm really hooked on Three's Company, so much so that I, there's three of us here today. <laughs> now with Three's Company, there were so many changes during the way. I mean, uh, we lost the Ropers and got Mr. Furley. Uh, we, we, we ended up having Chrissy, uh, then uh, Chrissy's sister, who obviously was not good enough to even be mentioned in the credits. Uh, then we kind of forgot about her, and then we went on uh, to the Priscilla Barnes character, whose name escapes me for the moment. Uh, but uh, it, it was, we had so many. And then, then let's not forget, we went from Three's Company to Three's a Crowd, which was the sequel series. Now, does that bother you that there was a, a, a follow-up series to an original classic like Three's Company? Um, 
Now, anything that can continue on the theme, but it was never as good as the original. The original's always the best. Uh, uh, yes, you, sir. This, this is my first meeting, and, and I'm just curious if anybody else has had the same experience that I have. Personally, my addiction was ALF. And oh, I, I loved ALF so much that I made, so my own ALF, you. I made my own ALF suit, and I wear it out in public. And That, that, is, and, that is very brave. That's everybody, let's applaud him for his bravery for coming forth with that. Yes. It's, we, it's, we support you, and we love you, even in your freaky weirdness. Thank you, thank you. It, it is getting kind of moldy, however, and people are giving me very strange looks as I continue to go to the grocery store in it, so. Uh, uh, I, now, are, are, are cats afraid of you when you wear that outfit? <laughs> I sewed specific pouches in it that I could stuff cats into to make it look like I was eating them. Oh, 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 I, I, now you don't do that anymore, do you? No, no, that's why I'm here. Uh, that's good. I, I, if mm, for I you. took off the shirt, you'd see all the scars from all the cat scratches, and uh, that was God, enough to we, convince me to stop. So We all have scars of some type, Scott. We're very proud of you for coming forward. Uh, who's uh, next who would like to speak? Yes. Uh, Hi, uh, my name's Armand. Or you, sir, sure. This is uh, my, my first meeting, and, um, well, you know, my favorite show was Charles in Charge. Um, <laughs> I like that he was the new boy in the neighborhood. You know, he lived downstairs and it was understood that he was there just to take good care of me. You know, I always wanted to have someone that could look out for me like that. Now, in your own life, was there someone who was in charge of you? No, but my parents did kind of leave a lot and do what they wanted to do. So I could have used a Charles in charge. So weren't you in charge of you? I mean, I'm Charles in the story? You are Charles in your story, my friend. You see, it all works out for you because you are your own Charles. Oh. Need to wrap up in a minute and a half. Yes, ma'am. Also, I also, mine is also emotional lack of fulfillment. My name is Jen, and I want to go where everyone knows my name. <laughs> no, no. Cheers to you, honey. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That and I want to sleep with Sam. But, I mean, <laughs> who doesn't? Of <laughs> uh, uh, Shelley Long, I think. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I hear that's a pretty normal kind of thing, though. Ooh. It is or about not. norm. The norm. It's not about norm. norm. Yeah. norm. Well, you know, it's a little known fact that a lot of people are obsessive about bars. Whoa. Uh, no. bars? Now, I, I, I think there's still them. one more person. There's still one more person here, I think, that needs to come clean uh, and, and join us. Janice? Well, I was also a fan of MASH and still am and own all the DVDs and have watched them multiple times. And Spencer, I have to say, Hawkeye is not the most soulful character. It's BJ. Oh, the oh, BJ. BJ. He just, oh, he wanted so much to get home to Peg and Aaron and just, oh, I cried. And Janice, cried. Janice, please calm down. We don't need to know about your obsession with BJs. He's definitely a clinger. Uh, oh. All right, now let, I, I think it's time to get okay, after Okay, that's off the radar. We need to go <laughs> after Mash and wrap things up. Now, everyone, I think it's very important that we all join together and try to say uh, our, our, our mantra that brings us all together here at What You Talking About, Willis. And of course, that all goes, we all say it together like this. We, we are, are so glad, so glad that, that we, we can turn off, turn off the, the TV, TV because, because Netflix is, is always, always there, there for us. us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I thank you all for participating. My timer says we have less than a minute, so I want to offer a special thanks to all of you, especially the Media West kind of folks, but thank you, Jen, also for joining us for today. Uh, this was a lot of fun, uh, and 